the name of God, the Holy Trinity, who makes a, who makes a way for the purposes, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Most High, who made a road through the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who led chariots and warriors to their doom, a mighty army fallen, never to rise again, snuffed out and extinguished like a wick. Forget the events of the past, ignore the things of long ago. Look, I am doing something new, now it springs forth. Can you not see it? I am making a road in the desert and settling rivers to flow in the wasteland. Wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I will put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, these people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
This is a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If they think they have the right to put their trust in external evidence, I have even more right. I was circumcised on the eighth day, being of the stock of Israel and the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew origins. In legal observance, I was a Pharisee, and so zealous that I persecuted the church. I was above reproach when it came to justice based on the law. But those things I used to consider gain, I now count as loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss in the light of the surpassing knowledge of my Savior, Jesus Christ, for whose sake I have forfeited everything. I count everything else as garbage, so that Christ may be my wealth, indeed that I may be found in Christ, not having any justice of my own, based on observance of the law. The justice I possess is that which comes through faith in Christ. It has its origin in God and is based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and the power of the resurrection, and how to share in Christ's sufferings by being formed into the pattern of Jesus' death, perhaps even to arrive at the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have reached it yet, or have already finished my course, but I am running the race in order to grab hold of the prize if possible, since Christ Jesus has grabbed hold of me. Sisters and brothers, I do not think of myself as having reached the finish line. I give no thought to what lies behind, but I push on to what is ahead. My entire attention is on the finish line as I run toward the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, the village of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they gave a banquet in Jesus' honor, at which Martha served. Lazarus was one of those at the table. Mary brought a pound of costly ointment, pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, wiping them with her hair. The house was full of the scent of the ointment. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was to betray Jesus, protested. Why was not this ointment sold? It could have brought nearly a year's wages and the money been given to the poor people. Judas did not say this because he was concerned for poor people, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of the common fund and would help himself to it. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You have poor people with you always, but you will not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In um, earlier traditions, the fifth Sunday of Lent, this Sunday, was often referred to Passion Sunday. In fact, in our beloved 1928 prayer book, this was Passion Sunday. And it marked the beginning of Passion Tide. We don't use that designation anymore, but it's clear that we are getting into the story of the Passion in the scriptures and in our lives and in the world we live in. In the Gospel reading, Mary anoints Jesus, preparing him for his death as he prepares to enter into Jerusalem. And over the next two weeks, we will find ourselves drawn into the story of Jesus' passion. We imagine being there. We feel the energy of the crowds. We hear the shouts, Hosanna first, and then crucify him. We witness the scourging, the taunts, the death. Evil is on full display in the murder of this innocent man. And we are left to wonder, what does this mean? Where is God? What can I believe? What can I hold on to? What can I do? Will it matter? Right now, in very visceral ways, we are also being caught up in the passion of Ukraine. We see the devastation of once beautiful cities. In Mariupol, we read there's no electricity, no water supply, no heating, no sanitary system. Nearly a quarter of Ukrainians have been forced out of their homes. Thousands of civilians have been killed. More than four million people have gone into exile. Evil is on full display here, too, and we are left with those same questions. Where is God? What can I believe? What can I hold on to? What can I do? Will it matter? This Sunday's liturgy is meant to be a time to live into those questions through words, music, 
prayers, images. How we answer those questions will likely be different for us. But there are examples or models in today's readings. Paul's letter to the Philippians is intensely personal, written to a community of people that he loves and who loved and cared for him. He writes from prison not knowing what his future holds, not knowing if he will live or die, or even if he wants to live or die. In the letter, he describes how his whole life has been caught up in the passion of Christ and how he's left everything behind for that. But those things I used to consider gain, I now count as loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss in light of the surpassing knowledge of my Savior, Jesus Christ for whose sake I have forfeited everything. His world has been turned upside down. His life is no longer his own, and this is his passion. How how does he respond? What does he do? I am running the race in order to grab hold of the prize, if possible, since Christ Jesus has grabbed hold of me. I give no thought to what lies behind, but I push on to what is ahead. Christ has grabbed hold of me, and so I push on. He pushed on, that's what he did. He pushes on, not because he is fearless, not trusting in his own power, not because of fealty to some doctrine or creed, but because Jesus has grabbed him, holds him. In prison, facing an uncertain future, Jesus holds him. And so he presses on to grab hold of the prize to do what he needs to do, to do what matters most. It was just six days before the Passover when Jesus came to dine with Mary and Martha. Martha prepares the feast. Risen Lazarus, risen Lazarus has joined them. You get the sense that Martha may not yet anticipate what is to come. John describes it as a celebratory banquet to honor Jesus. But Mary does. She does know what's coming. And so she takes a pound of pure nard, an expensive ointment, to anoint the feet of Jesus and then wipe them clean with her hair. She's preparing his body for burial. It's an act of tenderness and love that confounds Jesus. And by the way, in the other Gospels, Mark and Matthew, the disciples as well confounds them all. It was a wasteful thing to do. But relationships are not transactional. Yes, that ointment could have been sold and the money used to help others, but that is not what mattered in that moment. Getting the supper ready and tending to the guests is not what mattered in that moment. She knows that Jesus is one who holds her, loves her, and who also is facing his death. So in that moment, Mary anointed Jesus. There was nothing else to do. Mary did what mattered. In the midst of the passion of Jesus, of Ukraine, and of our lives, there is so much noise. It's so overwhelming, and it can be confusing. So how might these examples, Paul and Mary, speak to us now? I think they show us how our lives 
are bound up with God and one another, and it is those, those bonds that shape our actions. In a few moments, the choir is going to sing a new setting of a prayer for Ukraine posed by, composed by John Rutter. Finding himself caught up in the horror of what was happening in Ukraine, Rudder asked himself, how can a composer respond to a global tragedy? I suppose by writing music. And he goes on, the first thing I wanted to do was to write some music that would respond in my own way. I hope the meaning of the text will resonate in people's hearts and reach out to the people of Ukraine in their hour of need. Larry Reynolds heard this story, where is Larry, oh, Larry, and asked himself a similar question, how does a music director respond? How does a choir respond? I suppose by performing the music. So he reached out to John Rutter for the score, and we're gonna hear it. Yes. I started out by suggesting that as we find ourselves caught up in the passion of Jesus or Ukraine, we are so overwhelmed by the questions. What does this mean? Where is God? What can I believe? What can I hold on to? What can I do? Does it matter? Will it matter? But if we let ourselves live into those questions, we discover that God is grabbing us, holding us, and that our lives are bound up with one another. And the effect of that realization is to draw us deeper into the, pa into the passion, no longer an observer, someone in the crowd, standing at a distance, but rather like Paul, drawn into the race, setting everything else aside. And at the same time, how we act becomes so much clearer. We will know what matters. For Mary, what mattered six days before that fateful Passover was to anoint the feet of Jesus, bound together with him in the knowledge of what was to come. For John Rutter, after watching the horrors of the Russian invasion, it was to compose a prayer. For us in this moment, wanting to find a way in, to be in solidarity and give voice to our pain, it is to offer music, prayers, and words that bind us to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and to one another. The icon we carried in the procession is a traditional Ukrainian icon, the Virgin of Kiev, that we blessed to use in this service earlier this morning. It pictures Jesus in the embrace of his mother, Mary. Larry and Michelle Krakowski share Ukrainian Easter eggs every Easter it seems right to have them here today. They are both beautiful and fragile. They are made and shared as acts of love, as a way of binding together those who share them. This Ukrainian tradition, these eggs, evoke the promise of rebirth in springtime. And God holds us in that promise. bound together in love with one another and the people of Ukraine, sharing in their passion, trusting that God will never let us or let them go. Let us pray. Good Lord, protect Ukraine. Give her strength, courage, faith, hope. Amen.
light given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, We believe in our God, who has created and is creating, who has come to Jesus, the Lord made in flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God, we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to see justice. Dear God, we want to pray together as Jesus taught us and do as he did, constantly meeting new circumstances with right timing and just action. We always need your help, for the created world is ever-changing and growing. God of mercy. For the church all over the world, in communities large and small, we pray for its people and for their mission, always changing and growing to help and to serve. God of mercy, for the nation where we live and for those we have chosen to rule us and to guard us, give them wisdom for right action as we change and grow. Bless our presiding Bishop Michael and our Bishop Craig. God of mercy, for our living, growing, and changing planet, we pray for the knowledge and will to do what will serve its welfare the best. God of mercy, for our city community in Minneapolis and for our community of Saints Luke and James, grant us insight, patience, and courage to move ahead. Bless our leaders, our staff, and our clergy as we grow and change. God of mercy. For all who suffer from seen or unseen trouble, those known to us and those unknown, we pray. We are assured they are known and seen by you. For Anthony, Bill R., Bill and Jane, Charlie, David, David, Don, Doug and Yvonne, Hugh, Jerome, Jim, Jim T, Joanna, Joe, Kathy B, Kathy H, Kristen, Lynn, Marlis, Marnie, Mary, Maxine, Nick, Peggy, Ralph, Renee, Rich T, Rich and Ann, Robin, Ruth Ann and Tony, Sarah, Sarah and Sean, Sandra, Scott, Sydney, Ted, Theo, Tom, William, those recovering from COVID and those suffering in the Ukraine and Russia. Please add other names silently or aloud. God of mercy. For the departed who are joining those linked to us who have gone before us. God of mercy. God of mercy, accept these and all other prayers we bring on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our companion on the journey. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Uh, what we love is Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice.
God be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We desire to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, they may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we sing your, we praise your name and join with them in their unending hymn. Sun and moons and stars, we praise you, O God. 
blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gather as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, 
In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you, to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we share one bread and one God. Let us pray. <coughs> Blessed Jesus, this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with body and blood. Send our life and the God of salvation. Now send us forth to bear the life of the people to the world of need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And please be seated. We'll see if there's any announcements. There's not a lot of resty for those who work in the vestry. <laughs> and everyone else who does a lot of work. My name is Benita LaDuca, and we're just keeping the vestry alive and in front of you. And you'll notice in the uh, online bulletin that there is uh, a form you can, or a link you can click on if you have any issues. Give us a call. We listen to all. Uh, I don't have a lot more poetry here, bad poetry. <laughs> and um, so if you'd like to, to report something, you can also fill out a form, which is a link, or contact our warden, wardens, Max Athorn, uh, Mary McKelvey, and Fiona Shine. And I wanted to say that last week, if you missed the forum with the search committee that did a great job uh, in giving us an overview of the process, there's a link, too, in the bulletin on the online bulletin so that you can watch it. Is that correct, my search committee folks? All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Shibley, and I'm here as a representative from the Minnehaha Food Shelf. Um, I was on the board for the um, 2020 and 2021. Um, we have two new board members, Louise Robinson and Terry Keecher. Uh, so I'm no longer on the board, but Louise asked me to speak to the group because it's March Food Shelf Month. Even though it's April, you have until April 10th to get um, the donations in. Um, during that time, the donations are partially matched. There's a formula, so I can't tell you how they're matched, um, but it's a partial match. And um, so there's still time to get your money in. The mini Ha Ha Food Shelf is specifically asking that you consider your, the 33 cent um, campaign, which is in your bulletin. Um, that's a sustaining membership. The idea is that 33 cents a day is about $10 a month. Um, that leads to long range stability for our organization or to donate, consider donating personal hygiene and care items, uh, because those are things that are difficult for us to get. Uh, I will be staying afterwards. I have some information about hunger facts and envelopes and how to contact the food shelf if you want to volunteer or donate. Thank you. Um, good morning, my name is Tom Junilla and I'm the chair of the property team. Uh, we had a wonderful spring cleanup day here at our church, St. Luke's and James. Uh, yesterday, um, a, one wonderful group of volunteers did a number of things both inside and outside. Um, so admire the, the beauty, the new beauty of our church. Uh, 
in the memorial room uh, are five pictures and one mirror, all suitable for home decoration. <laughs> and we, the property team, would love it if you were to select one and take it home with you. Um, so please feel free to do that uh, and um, admire our church. Amen. Good morning. I have been told that people can't hear me when I have my mask on, so I'm going to take it off. I'm going to have you. There we go. Um, this is not in your bulletin, so that's why we're making an announcement. Um, I am Sheila Foster, Director of Community Involvement, and this is Claire, and this is Anna. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like I won the prize there. Anna, and uh, if you didn't know, Easter is coming, and uh, it is a day of great celebration. It is also an opportunity for us to have an Easter egg hunt, and I need help uh, because we are also hoping to extend this invitation for the Easter egg hunt following the service on Easter morning um, to the neighborhood as well. So we are going to need a lot of eggs is my hope. Or, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll be collecting a lot of eggs after, uh, after the service. Anyway, so Jane, or, I mean, uh, Claire has a, a basket here. There's ton of Easter eggs. Not all of them are put together. Um, if you would be willing to take a bag, there are some bags out there, home with you, fill them with whatever you might want. It can be candy, it can be a toy, and that way then when they open the eggs, there is going to be something in there that's going to be a surprise because um, as we celebrate the open tomb, um, as they open the eggs, those will also become open empty tombs when they give them back. So thank you, and if you have any questions, plastic eggs, plastic eggs. And if you forget throughout the, if you forget to grab some, you can always buy some more plastic eggs and fill them up, bring them back next Sunday and or before Easter, that would be great. Thank you. just um, want to remind you that the Holy Week schedule is in the bulletin, starting with Palm Sunday next week, and then Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Tezay service, um, and then Easter Sunday. And also, I want to um, welcome Joanna Reeves, who's down here, who's back in church.
peace. Jesus meets you along the way. Thanks be to God.